good morning. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some science. I know that I assigned to you guys um, some water cycle work. Now remember the water cycle is composed of several different processes in which we see water go from its liquid state to its gas state and then kind of to its frozen state or obviously ice um, and then back down into precipitation and that cycle just continues on and on and on. So, um, well, we were going to do some cloud in a bottle experimenting today but my lab partner, Charlie, is still asleep and I didn't want to set off the smoke detector. So we won't be doing that today. But I do have an assignment for you at the end that will involve the use of this bottle. I got my coffee to get going here. Uh, and then of course, some diagrams to help you out. So the first stage, when we talk about the water cycle, we have a collection point, think puddles or lakes, rivers, any place that water tends to collect. And then we add the element of heat. Now, when you add heat, into any type of a standing pool of water, we get what's called evaporation. That's where water goes from the liquid state to the gas state. It's heated up and the molecules tend to spread apart. Now, as that gas form of water travels higher and higher into the atmosphere, it gets colder and colder. Now, as it gets cold, we have what's called condensation. Condensation is where that gas water goes back into almost a frozen form, like a liquid, but a little bit more close to a solid. Condensation is what we see happening when there's clouds in the sky. Now it's important to understand the clouds in the sky, not only do they, they occur because of condensation, but it's also because those particles of water attach themselves to things like smoke and dust and whatever else might be found in our atmosphere. Now, once those clouds get really full and heavy, we have what's called precipitation. Now we see precipitation can be water, like rain, or it can be something like snow or hail or a mixture of both. So here, I have this bottle, and we're going to pretend that this is the Earth. Obviously, the Earth is more spherical, um, but we're going to pretend this is the Earth. Now, I'm going to create my reservoir of water, and then the Earth is contained. That means that that beautiful layer of ozone keeps everything kind of tucked inside. So here we have our standing water. And in a minute here, we're gonna to start to see some of the processes we just talked about occurring. Evaporation, condensation, and then a bit of precipitation. Your job is to draw a picture of my bottle, my earth, and then label the parts showing evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. Now you should have some notes inside of those assignments that I gave you that talk about the parts of the water cycle. I also know that there's some information on Seesaw to help you out. All right. Let's get close so we can see what's happening inside of our bottle. All right, here's that bottle up close. And I want you to draw this picture. And then I want you to label the parts that you see. Obviously, we do have some evaporation occurring. And there's some condensation happening in there, too, as well as the process of evaporation. All right, good luck. Be sure to write down all of the parts inside of that journal you have so that it can be graded. I'll talk to you soon.